Doug Thompson here, and we're in my shop, and uh, we're gonna make another little swing frame bender. This is a little top bender that I made, and uh, it's, there's a solid main frame. The pins can move back and forth. You can put different tools in it, different round bar, flat bar, uh, square bar, whatever. But in this bender, this is both a top bender, and you can bend in the center. You can put a lot more force in the center of the bender because it won't torque. So today we're gonna to make this little bender. So the first step is to select this material. And what I've chosen to do is to use 3 8 by inch and a quarter for the swinging frame and the main frame. I'm gonna pretty much copy this layout here. I'm gonna cut the material for the swinging frame to this dimension, weld it together, tack it together, cut two pieces, for the main frame, tack them together, and then we're gonna drill all of our holes to produce this little bender. I'm gonna cut out two bars at seven and two bars at eight. On the original bender, I used some uh, 3 8 inch uh, stainless steel round rod. But for this bender, I went over to the hardware store and I bought a bolt. I'm gonna cut off the thread, but I'm gonna use a grade eight bolt for our pins, make it a little bit stronger. I've made the back end handle, shimmed it with 1 8 inch, 1 8 inch, 1 16th shims so that these bars are parallel. We decided that we wanted to have one and five sixteenths clearance so we could conceivably could get a one and a quarter inch bar in there if we had to bend it. That's gonna be our limit. So we cut the form die assembly fixture at one and five sixteenths. We drilled it on the lathe, three eighths of an inch hole. So you saw me make the form die on the lathe. It's just an easy way to do that in our shop but it's not necessary. What you can do is take some round bar, cut it off, and then you can take it over to the drill press and drill it out. And then you can make various form dies out of either steel or typically aluminum. I passed bending pins through here and here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tack the bars to the handle, turn it around, finish it up, and we'll have our swing arm assembly ready to go. I'm going to put a weld on the back corner here and here. I'll put a small weld in the front here, maybe even get it to the side. What I don't want to do is have these bars twist open because of the welding sequence going wrong. So again, kind of one and then two, flip it over to the other side. So again, and I'm just tacking it for right now. We're going to finish up the kind of the main frame of our swing frame bender. I'm utilizing the, the, the swinging arm to kind of help and assist in the assembly of the main frame. I've measured and gotten all of this stuff parallel, measuring like this to get the bender uh, parallel with the table. We've made our separation blocks such that we have a parallel dimension here and here equal space. Now I'm going to weld up this block assembly. And again, very carefully, I'll weld the outside, tack this, then go to the other side, finish welding it, and then we'll design the mechanism by which uh, this will attach to a vise.
One of the things that we've considered in the bender is how are you going to hold it? You can clamp it to the table, but ideally, if you have a vise, you can set the block here. Notice I've got uh, two pieces of 3 8 inch square bar that are welded parallel to the body of the bender. And then you can just set it on the vise, tighten it up, and then your top bending can be done without any interference. I'm just gonna point out here that this is this the piece of 3 8 inch square bar that I've blocked down below the swinging frame so that when you drop the pin in, it's gonna stop at that point. I'm also gonna describe this element here. This is kind of like a, a disc that receives the stop mechanism. And it also serves as a keeper for the pin so they don't fall through right here. So it's welded here and then comes over to here so that it serves kind of two functions. One is this little keeper, and then two as the, the disc to receive the adjustable stop. I'm just gonna demonstrate a couple of easy bends. I'll bend in the middle. This is a compression bend. So I'll hold the bar in place. I've got the pins at their closest setting, and then I'll pull and make a 180 degree bend. I've got to go by it a little bit because there is such a thing as spring back. The harder the material, the more it's going to want to spring back. So I'm holding it and then it'll release back. And I've got pretty close to 180 there. And a really nice radius. Now I'll move to the top and I'll make a sequential bend where I'm just going to bend a little bit at, at each point. I'm going to advance it about the same amount and bend it about the same amount. Bend just to create a big open curve. I could even flip it over and do what's called a counter bend and create a, kind of an OG curve. And each time I'm advancing it about the same amount. 